What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. So what we're gonna do in today's video is dive into Bitcoin and a metric that I personally use in order to determine what stage of the market cycle we're at. Now this metric is good for not only determining the stage of the market cycle, but also showing you the trend within the market cycle. So it's a very strong measurement of how traders are viewing the market at any given time and showing you, is it likely that we're in an uptrend? And even if the price starts to crash down, are we going to get a bounce in the coming days? Or is it likely that we're going to continue the downtrend in the short term and go crashing down to lower levels? The first thing I wanna talk about though is our new site that we've just released, polaritydigital.io. I've released this with the guys over at Upside Down Data. On the site, we offer a wide range of risk metrics, not only for Bitcoin, but numerous altcoins. So I think there's around 32 altcoins that we offer at the moment. So we have these risk metrics, you know, these can be used to improve your market timing for uh, basically any type of trader, whether you're a short-term holder, you're a swing trader, or whether you're a long-term holder. And in addition to the risk metrics, we also release very nuanced weekly member videos, which really dive into market analytics. Recently, we just talked about ways to determine your weekly dollar cost average amount based on using the risk metrics. We went into an in-depth market analysis approach to determining how much you should invest on a weekly basis because a lot of people struggle to determine how much should I invest if we're down in the lowest risk tiers or what if we're up in the higher risk tiers. So we talked about what is the relative value of investing a certain amount at each level. So this is just an example of the type of in-depth market analysis that we're doing over at polaritydigital.io. So I suggest you head over and check it out. Now with that said guys, let's get into it. Okay guys, so we're gonna start by just quickly looking at the price here. So right now, we know that we are sitting down here at 30K. So we've got stalled out right here where we talked about in some recent videos, right around that 31.5, you know, basically 31, 31.5 zone, right? We kind of came up here, we got up to 31.6 and we got absolutely rejected at that level. All right, so, you know, that's kind of what we talked about in our you know one of our recent supply distribution videos we said that you know there's not a ton of resistance here in terms of the number of holders but when you look back this has been a very important level and it's likely that once we break above that zone we'll be off to the races nonetheless we need to get above that zone first and that's kind of what we've been struggling with so one of the things we can quickly see is that you know we're still in this uptrend though we still have a bit of room left in this uptrend so i wouldn't be surprised to see a pullback down to this level around 27.5 28k level that would not surprise me at all you know it's going to be interesting to see what happens as we start to approach you know the end of this wedge so it wouldn't be the most shocking thing if we broke below it, especially with, uh, you know, the Fed decision coming shortly where ultimately they're probably going to raise rates again, 25 basis points. I think this is going to be an important level to watch. Do we get a bounce off this level or are we going to come down to this 27.5, 28K level and just get rejected from there. We're, we're kind of approaching a point where we have a trend line that we've been forming now for, it's been about eight months at this point. There's a much stronger resistance level just overhead, right at this 31.6 level, all right? So this is a critical point to continue to watch in this market. So the first thing I wanna look at is this. This won't be the metric that we're ultimately looking at today, but this gives you a very strong indication of what is sort of influencing the shorter term price for Bitcoin or for any asset for that matter. It's just, we happen to have the data for Bitcoin. We're looking at the short term holder realized price. And this is basically giving us the average price at which short term holders own this asset. And I'm gonna show you why this is so important. So we often hear that the 20 week moving average is the level that's kind of supporting the market, but it's not really the 20 week moving average. It's actually this short term holder realized price. So the 20 week moving average is just a derivative of the short term holder realized price. Okay, so we're looking at holders who have owned this asset from one hour up to five months. And it turns out that these guys are actually the majority of the daily trading volume. So you're going to see high levels of price sensitivity based around where these short-term holders own this asset. So let's take a look at this yellow line first. That's going to be 
the 20 week moving average. Now, what you'll notice is let's look at the pink line now and a perfect example of this. Let's go back to, uh, you know, back here in 2013. Notice where the price gets a bump when it comes down off of this all time high that we hit back in 2013. It bumps right off of the short term holder price. And that's because in a bullish market, when there's still a lot of bullish momentum driving the market forward, you're going to find that once you go down to the average price at which short term holders own the asset, that is where you're going to get that bump at. Conversely, you'll notice that the 20 week moving average really didn't impact the price in any way at that point. This short term holder cost basis is a much better reflection of what the price is reacting around because it's an actual value where short term holders own this asset at. Because if you're sitting at a loss and you're a short term holder, the second you come up to your cost basis, what's going to happen? Well, you know, just imagine if you guys were, you know, holding at 11K. So right here, the short term holder cost basis was around 11K and the price got all the way down to around 6.7K. The second we came up to that short term holder cost basis at around 10K back in May of 2018, the second we got back to that short term holder cost basis, that's where you saw the sell off come at. All right. So this metric is very good for determining trend analysis in the setting of either a strong bull market or a strong bear market. So when you come back up to the short term holder cost basis, what you're typically going to see is the price kind of get rejected off that level if we're on the way down or bounce off of that level if we're on the way up. So as we go on in time, you'll notice that in the bull markets is when these two metrics get really separated from each other, like right here, right? And right here. And you could almost think of that as a very bullish indicator when these two metrics are getting far apart and the short term holder cost basis is above that of the long term holder cost basis. That's a very bullish sign. And why is that? And that's because as the 20 week is falling below the short term holder cost basis, that means that more short term holders are coming in and buying up the asset at whatever price you're currently at. And so it's driving the short term holder cost basis towards the actual price while the 20 week moving average is delayed somewhat. And so we can see that here. You'll notice that each time these two get significantly separated, like here, like here and here, those are points where the market is in an exuberant rally. Conversely, when they cross over, that's a very bearish sign. So you'll notice that we crossed here, we crossed here, and we crossed here. In each case, in each case, this crossing of these two metrics really gave you a strong indication that we were headed for a lot of pain, a lot of pain coming in the market. Now you'll notice we've had a bullish crossover here, but these two metrics are essentially having a near impossible time separating from one another. So that's kind of an indication that, you know, there's no particular strong trend right now. There's nothing indicating to us that we are in a strong major upturn in the market at the moment. This is a relatively important uh, indicator that you can use to, you know, to really say that, hey, this is a strong uptrend that we're seeing right now versus they've flipped over. And now it's probably likely that we're going to see some pain in the market. So, you know, these two flipped right here when we were still at around 57K. And what came next? Within a few days, we saw this market turn over and we were down, you know, just three months later trading at around 30K. So this is one to watch, guys. Okay, so the metric I want to look at today is this. This is the short term holder output profit ratio. So the definition of this metric makes it sound somewhat difficult, but it's actually very easy to understand. This is just looking at the profit ratio. So the price at which short term holders are selling compared to the price at which they bought the asset. So if you're at one, that means you're break even. So the metric is basically you're going to see it as an oscillator. It's going to oscillate around that one level. If you're at one, that means you know, if you bought at 100, that means you sold at 100 on average. And that's what we're seeing here. Now, when we're above one, then that's indicating that short term holders are selling at a profit. So the higher we go, that indicates that short term holders at these higher levels are selling at huge profits. Conversely, 
when we're much below this one level, that means that short-term holders are selling at a loss, okay? So it's a very simple metric. So what I wanna look at today is the way that a lot of people use this metric is by when we're coming down to this one level. So, you know, one is going to be kind of right here, okay? I have it marked out for us right here, this dash line. Let's make it a better color. So when we come down to that one level, we should get a bump off that level. And it's for what I just mentioned before. Remember, we said short-term holders, when you come down to their cost basis, when you're in an uptrend, you typically will see a bump off of that level. When we're in a downtrend and we come up to their cost basis, you'll typically see a rejection off of that level. Okay, so let me show you an example of what we mean here. Notice that right here, we made our peak in November of 2013 at around... Uh, $1,100. Notice then we spiked down below this level. So you'll notice that I have this 1.0 level and that's their break even point, but I don't think that's a good way to look at this metric. And I think the better way to do it is to draw a level down here at 99% and at 101%. So what that is telling us is that it's not actually right at their cost basis where the reversal occurs. A good way to determine if there has been a market trend change is by using this upper level and this lower level, the 101 and the 99 level. So you'll notice that we break below this 99 level and then there's a quick snap back. And if you want to put that in relative terms, what does that mean? Well, this break below Okay, and this quick snap back says the market is indecisive. You'll think uh, back to like December of 2021. That would have been the time when we came off of 69K and you know we went down to around 56K. And a lot of people were saying, don't worry guys, this is the reset. We're gonna reset right here and then go up to 100K. This is that point in the market where market participants are mixed. There's a mixed review on what's going on. This break below, though, was a strong indication that we're probably now in a downtrend once we broke below this 99 level. So that was telling you that a lot of short term holders, a huge number of short term holders sold at a large loss right here. So you'll notice what happens then. We have this additional indecisive stage of the market. But once you start going below that 99 level, that is a strong indication to you that you are probably now in a downtrend. And sure enough, that's what we saw. We're now stuck below this 99 level. We do get a quick spike above, but what happens? We come back down and now we're stuck in this channel again. And this is where you really get to see the fact that we're now in a defined downtrend, okay? So we're in this downtrend and notice what's happening during this time. So in each case, we're coming up to this 101 level, right? Like here in July, here November 14th, here in March of 2015, and then even here in July of 2015. So an entire year, every time we get up to that 101 level, we get rejected off of it. And what happens each time we come up to this 101 level? Notice uh, the price guys, we go from 450 all the way down to a price of 176. Then we go from a price of right here at 300, all the way down to, you know, we come back down again, down to here to around 205. So, you know, in the first case, it was more than a 50% loss in a very short number of days. And in the second instance, it was around a 33% loss. And, you know, we're, we're talking about timeframes here of, you know, a month, two months, right? And in this case right here, you know, we went from again, 315 and we spiked all the way down until uh, down to around 200 bucks. So watching for this bounce off of this 101 level was a strong indication for us that we were still in a downtrend, but what happened? And it happened right here. It, now you'll notice it started to kind of happen back here in April. But right here in August of 2015, it was definitive. We got a bounce off of the 99 level, and that was critical for this market. So we bounced off of that 99 level, and that was right at around 200 bucks. And what happened? Now we're breaking above, guys. And now you'll notice as we approach the 99 level, we break above. Okay, so we've shifted from getting stuck on that 101 level and breaking to the downside. 
going up to the 101 level, breaking to the downside. Now, if you're watching this 99 level, that 99 level has become profitable. It's become massively profitable to buy as you come down to just below the short-term holder cost basis, indicating that short-term holders are moving into the market. So this is huge. You know, this is huge. You know, and, and let's just quickly run through the rest of the way. Notice each time we come down to this 99 level here and here and here, notice each time it's a major spike down. It's a major spike down in the market, right? And then like here, you know, look, so, 765 and then we go up to you know around 1250 and then a spike down to around 850 right and these are defined guys so it's a very strong indicator when you're in an uptrend that you're going to hold this level so these spikes down to this level are just massively profitable if you're waiting for these and trading these but what happens it reverses right here right here in january we saw that as the price came, started to come down to like 12K or so, that's when it was much more definitive saying, hey, this market cycle's over. Because now look what happens. We come down, short-term holders are selling at a massive loss. And now what's happening? We're getting rejected at the 101 level, rejected at the 101 level, rejected at the 101 level, okay? And you'll see that we're never getting above that level. All right, so what if we just jump ahead to where we're at in the market now? Well, you know, so after this COVID breakdown, you know, we had this like this, uh, this same type of pattern here where we went down, we're getting rejected off of this level. We go down, we get above for a very short amount of time. We had the COVID breakdown, but then that led to a snapback to the upside. And there you started to see us Ultimately, the important thing to take away from this is right here. This was your strong indication. We came down, we held this 99 level as support, and what did we do from there? That's when, you know, if you used that indicator right there on that day and said, hey, that is a strong indication that we've been above this level now since May of 2020. Now we've came down and held this 99 level as support. Right here, that would have got you into Bitcoin at 10.4. And then, you know, obviously, I think we all know that we went all the way up from there up to around 64K, right, in April of 2021. So we had our breakdown, and you saw it all over again, guys. Once we started to break down below, there was a weak rally, but we came down to this 99 level. We tried to use it as support, but what happened? We bounced but we got rejected off of that 101 level twice. We got rejected off of it twice here and here. So in uh, February and then in March, down to this June level. And you know, from there, that's same old story all over again, heading back up to the short-term holder cost basis where we're getting rejected off of that one up to 101 level until right here, right around here. So we broke above, then we held it as support. And so now we are in an upturn. We are in an upturn in this market. So ultimately the thing to watch is going to be as we're coming down right now, down to these short-term holders cost basis, we're sitting right at around one at the moment. And you know, I've showed you a long track record of how this goes. If we come down to one, down to 99, and we're able to hold this important level, and you know, it is an important level. It's a very important level. So what we want to see is as we come down to these guys' cost basis and get just below it, can we hold this 99 level as support? If we're able to, you know, it's very likely we will see this rally continue. And if we break down, you know, I've showed you numerous times here where a breakdown below that short-term holder cost basis, that is a strong indication that there is something coming ahead. We have almost no instances where we break down below this 99 level that the price continues in a positive momentum price pattern so that's going to be it for this one guys let me know what you think about this metric i think uh you know i think there's a lot you can take away from this and i'm interested to see what you guys think about it so leave a comment down below let me know what you think and until next time as usual see you